It's okay. Awesome. I, I do know how to project. No. No, doesn't work. Well, we're going to call this meeting to order for December 16th of 2019. My name is Jim Reistroffer. I'm the chairman. Next is uh, Tom Quinn, and my far right is Judith uh, Lee. <laughs> I'll give you a rough time. <clears throat> you know, before we start, I just want to say something. You know, we got only three members here today, and we usually have a board of five members that do the voting. Well, when your petition comes up and one of the members deny it, it is done. So we're going to give you the option. If you want to go through with this, we can. If you don't, please tell me when I read your, your case. And it's up to you whether then we'll do it at the next meeting when we might have four or five members. So. I just want to let you, you think about it while we're going through our agenda here. Okay? Everybody can hear me? Thanks for the heads up. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to start. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone here today and our viewing audience to the December 16th of 2019 City of Davenport, the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Your participation in city government is appreciated and welcome. If you have a mobile device, please turn it off as it may interfere with the room's electronics. And of course, I introduce myself and the members here today. And the staff present is Scott Coops, and our attorney is Mallory Hoyt. The Zoning Board of Adjustment is a five member judicatory <coughs> board established by the state law. We are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the city council to serve without compensation for a five year term. The board meets twice a month to hear appeals involving hardships from strict application of the current zoning laws. We also grant special uses and rules on administrative appeals. <laughs> Are there any corrections to the minutes of our last meeting? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the meeting minutes from okay. last month. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passed. <coughs> Any old business? I see no old business. <clears throat> New business. Our first item on our agenda is <coughs> request HV 19-20 of Acme sign on behalf of Five Below at 902 West Kimberly Road for a hardship <coughs> variance to install an 87.75 square foot sign. Okay. With that which will exceed the amount of allowed wall signage by 31.17 square feet. Section 17.12.060.1.4 allows a maximum sign area of 56.58 square feet for this commercial unit wall sign. Is the applicant here? Yes. Okay. Scott. Uh, Scott Coates, Community Planning and Economic Development. Um, so this case is for a wall sign. It faces Kimberly Road, although it's back, um, I don't know, it's 300 or more feet, but it's back quite a ways from Kimberly. <coughs> um, this is what the sign is going to look like. And there's been some upgrades to the front facade of the strip center there. Kind of shows the decorative pieces there to the left and then around the side five below. So they're doing a, a rehab, kind of a facade facelift there. Um, this is just where the unit is, showing where the sign's located. Um, we sent out our notices to the 200 feet of the proper, subject property. We did not have any comments either in favor or against. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> 
as you know, we we are going to be, I've mentioned this in a couple other meetings, so we are looking at revising our wall sign code to allow larger signs because a lot of the signs, when you put them on the facade, if you stick to the, the uh, square footage prescribed by the code, it, it doesn't really look to scale. It looks smaller than what you would expect. And so we're, we're revising that, but we haven't had that approved yet at this point. Um, so in our analysis, we looked at the four items that you consider, uh, strict application of the ordinance, uh, physical surroundings, the plight of the owner, unique circumstance, and um, essential character. And staff found that the variance was uh, met the requirements in all four of those conditions that we recommend approval as proposed. Okay. You, commissioners, do you have any questions of staff? Mm -hmm. Nope. Scott, is this a plastic sign or a metal sign? <coughs> I would uh, defer to the petitioner. Okay. Well, first of all, do you want to proceed? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, you want to come on up and give your name and. We're I guess first. My name is Doug Jarvis, okay. Acme Sign. And first off, I want to apologize for making you guys show up on a Monday instead of the when it was scheduled. It's uh, if it was up to me, I would have postponed. But Five Below has uh, a deal going with the landlord, and I don't know exactly what's involved. But they need to have their lease signed before the first of the year. Now. The question, those, those letters are individual letters, the five below, they're LED lighted. Okay. Are you happy with the quality of the sign? Personally, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I, it's, it's hard for me to say any more than what Scott said already. Yeah. I, granted, the, I think that uh, there's going to be more cases come up as far as for variances mm -hmm. unless the code gets changed somewhat and uh, I don't like to come before you guys and I know that you don't like to have somebody come every month either okay. and I, this is backed by Ross Dress for Less and Ross Dress for Less was put in before the code changed and they're probably what ten times the amount of sign that this is Scott something like that yeah I didn't check the it's, it's, a, it's a, large, a large difference, and they're straight back off of Kimberly Road. So you and there's an incline; they're back so far, and uh, it is probably still not readable that much from up in Kimberly Road. But it helps direct people after they get in the parking lot on where on where they are in the, in the shopping center. Commissioner, you got any questions for Doug? I have no uh, question. Question for Scott. Scott, you mentioned a potential change in the ordinance. Right now, I think it's one square foot per lineal foot of facade. Is that is that um, is there any talk about what, right. what that would be going to? Um, well, we're trying to define what the facade is because uh, some of these facades go up above the typical portion of the wall. Some don't. You know, some have windows that take away a lot of facades. So we we we're, were looking at maybe at one point five. Um, feet per linear foot uh, and still keeping the minimum 40 or maybe raising the minimum 40 to 50 or more 50 or 60 or something like that but we haven't gotten to the specifics yet I, I know that these people's next location at least what I was told they were going to go uh, to the dress barn you know that's out behind Chili's and next to Hyde on 53rd Street and that facade is like huge and being tall and wide and you know when you start but it's not all that three or four hundred <laughs> feet and, and you get eliminated or eliminated a lot of square footage when you're down to the one foot I'd almost say you might end up with two feet and you're not and you're not out of line okay. Thank you. the you old know? c2 <laughs> code was two feet of signage for every one linear Street frontage. Okay. 
Staff yeah. recommends approval, right, Scott? Yes, we're recommending uh, approval for this. Okay. Yeah, the, other, the, other thing they, the other thing that they sometimes do is do like a percentage of the square foot of the wall. Okay. Where you got the height and you got the height and the width, and then <clears throat> fifteen percent or twenty percent of the wall square footage. Okay. Well, Doug, I want to ask you again. Do you want us to proceed on this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I might not. The five below <laughs> wants to. So. <laughs> okay. So, is anybody in the audience in favor of this request? In favor? Yeah. Well, no. If you're going <laughs> to say something, you got to come up and give your name and. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take. I'll take. I'll let them vote. Okay. Okay. Well, we got three people in favor of this request. Am I correct? Okay. Well, to make the record, I got to have you come up and give your name and uh, in favor of the request. Each one of us. Yes. <coughs> While they're getting up there, I will say I, I looked up the distance, so the facade okay. is 550 feet from Kimberly Okay. Road. Okay. Just your name and, and you're in favor, and if you have any little comments that you're in favor of, it, they'd be glad to. Yeah, Brad Morrison, and uh, I'm in favor um, exactly for what Scott had mentioned. It, it's a scale issue for some signage, and uh, yeah, I think mean, in this case it really fits. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Matt Obras, I would agree with everything. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming up. John Chesney. Um, I also am in agreement with Scott. Um, as a business owner as well, um, and owning a business is tough as it is. So to actually have a sign that looks proportional to the building is really important to uh, the business success. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Is there anyone in the audience opposed to this request? Applicant, do you got any final comments? No, thank you. Okay. Board discussion? Okay. Mm -hmm. Need a motion? Make a motion to approve uh, HB 19-20. I second. Okay. We need a voice vote um, on this? We'll do roll call. Okay. Um, Lee? Yes. Quinn? Yes. And Rice Stroffer? Yes. Thank your, you. Your variance has been approved. Thank you. Okay. Our second item, um, of course, uh, Mr. Tim Schaefer, is he here today? <coughs> Again, do you want to proceed? You're going to need three votes to pass, and if one member decides not to, to vote in favor, it's going to be turned down or denied. Can I get a clarification on that? Has, well, five members here, can it, does it have to be three, can three, two pass? If there's only three members, um, we have a board of five. It's not a majority, but uh, if any of the members vote or deny, the, the, your request fails. So you need all three members to vote yes. Okay? If you want to proceed, we can put it on the agenda for next item when we will probably have five members. So for any item to pass, no matter if you have five, four, right. three, you need three votes right. in, in favor. When will the next meeting be? The ninth of January. Um, if, if, if we don't get three votes tonight, what's the process? For well, so if you go forward, uh, that's been you're basically accepting the fact that you, you need three votes. The only way then, should it fail, you would have to have either someone who voted against it. Uh, make a motion that's successful to reconsider the request and if you do that in enough time you could do it at the next meeting but you have to have one member. have the motion made by someone who voted it down and so if there's nothing significant different with your request <coughs> so if you're submitting the same request twice it essentially isn't going you know it has to have something substantially different to it for them to vote on Okay. 
So Scott, they will be put on the next uh, mm -hmm. agenda. You can, um, yeah, you can. Well, if we, you do we have to make a motion? motion? Table, that's fine. Okay. Okay. I need a motion to table this mm -hmm. request. I motion to table this request. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So you okay? Um, C request of River Bend Sign Works. We have the same request from you. Um, you need three uh, <clears throat> votes to pass. If you get one denies, it's your decision. Request HV 19-22 <coughs> of Riverbend Sign Works on behalf of the Ridge at 4750 Utica Ridge Road Suite 100 for a hardship variance to install a 95 square foot sign which will exceed the amount of the allowable wall signs by 55 square feet. Section 17.12.060.1 Point four allows a maximum sign area of 40 square feet for this commercial unit's wall sign as the unit is less than 40 feet in width. Staff, Scott? Scott Coates, Community Planning. Um, so this is again a similar case to the one we had, the first case today. Um, the unit is less than 40 feet wide, so the minimum we, uh, the largest their sign can be uh, is 40 square feet. Um, now, the one that they have proposed here is uh, approximately 55 square feet. Um, in staff's opinion, it, um, <coughs> it doesn't look overly large. It's proportional to the building, and it would be similar to what we would approve with the code if it did get amended by council, if they approved our uh, submission and our next omnibus code change. They met our four conditions, uh, and staff recommends the four approval. Okay. <coughs> and if you need a little background for where it is, it's kind of across from the old gold gym to the family Y on Utica Ridge mm -hmm. Road. So that's a new strip mall? Right, there's okay. like three or two right. units there. Okay. Okay. <sighs> is the applicant here? Yes. Okay. You want to uh, come up and present your case? Gives her a hard time. Here, so. <laughs> Just take your time, you'll do fine. Thank you. Thank you very much, John and Chesney. I'm the owner of the Rich Social Drinkery with my husband as well. Um, obviously, we're requesting this uh, variance so the sign can be proportional to the building. Um, if you're to see it head on, uh, the approved signage that would go in there would honestly look pretty silly. Um, it's pretty small in comparison to the large, I don't even know what you'd call that thing, like a, just the facade, just the facade of the building. Uh, and I will add to, I don't know, that, do we have a photo of the entire building? Or? Uh, the whole strip? Well, yeah, the whole strip, <coughs> just on our end is where this is. The rest right. of the building has smaller facades, so it's just the biggest uh, section of that building that we have for this business. Um, and, I'll just, yeah, uh, please, I'll, I need to state my name. Yes. Brad Morris and Riverbend Signworks. Uh, a couple of things we're also dealing with. Um, so in addition to being set back, it's about 200, um, over 200 um, feet back from traffic that moves along there. Um, so in addition to being set back, it's also um, set down. So it, it's sort of, yeah. uh, it's not as easy to see as a building that would be at the same grade as a road because it, it drops down in. Um, and then with the um, traffic, um, I know it's a 35 mile an hour speed limit. Most people go a little faster than that, it seems like, on that particular road. Um, but just with the, with the speed of transit, it makes it more difficult to see it. So when we shrink it down to be that, um, that uh, square footage, it really impacts the branding. It makes it look 
uh, first of all, it, it looks really small to scale and it becomes um, nearly unreadable uh, just with the size. So and there's kind of a couple reasons why it makes sense to make it a little larger. <coughs> Uh, it, uh, from a um, construction standpoint, so they're dimensional. So it will be letters that stand off. Um, unlike the last sign you saw that was internally illuminated, this one will have external <coughs> illumination on it. So it will be uh, it will be lamped externally so that you'll see it uh, on the building. It's light enough colored background that that'll have a nice contrast. Commissioners, you got any questions to uh, the applicant? Nothing for me. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Staff would like to say that uh, there is no freestanding sign proposed with this business at this time, so there okay. won't be any freestanding signs. No. Okay. So that will be it. Yeah. There'll be a sign in the back, but as far as what's visible from the street, yes. Yeah. Um, is there anyone in the audience in favor of this request? Seeing none, is there any opposed to this request? Okay. Applicant, you got any final comments? Um, I appreciate the experience of coming down here because I've never been down here for a zoning meeting okay. before, so thank you for having us. Yeah, well, uh, sorry we had to switch the day. So. That's okay. <laughs> any board discussion? No. Well, I ask for a motion. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Judith. No, I don't have the number. You go ahead. Stand by. I, I move to approve HV, request HV 19-22. Second. Another voice for it? Or is this uh, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, Lee? Yes. Quinn? Yes. Rice Rock? Yes. You've been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for letting us. We heard there was going to be lobster bisque. I'm a little disappointed. No, it's probably not as good as what you serve. <laughs> okay. Our final one is. Uh, Can I ask a quick question, Scott? Will we receive any sort of notice or anything? Uh, I'll email you tomorrow. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our last request, Terrence. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. If I don't pronounce the last name, Sabon. What is it? Chevillian. Yes. <coughs> Are he, he's actually on the phone. He was not able to travel here for medical reasons. Okay. Um, I'm in his place. Okay. So. But um, you're aware of the if one member. Of I have the homeowner <coughs> with me also. So okay. Yes, do you want to proceed? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Last item is request HV 19-23 of Terrence, and again, I apologize, civilian. civilian, on behalf of Mindy Richards at 3331 Hobson Avenue for a hardship variance to encroach into the required front setback with a detached garage and to maintain the existing gravel driveway. The proposed garage would be set back 30 feet from the front lot line 28 foot encroachment into the required 58 foot setback. Section 17.09.030.A.4.C prohibits detached accessory structures in a front yard. Section 17.10.030.1.4 requires hard surface materials for vehicle areas. Okay. Scott? Scott Coates, Community Planning. Um, so our code uh, wants to have accessory structures have a less prominent role, and that's why they're required to be either in line with the house or behind the house. Um, even though this property here, um, the setback for this property is 25 feet, so they meet the principal set setback, <coughs> but uh, accessory structures have an additional burden of being set back farther than that. Um, the properties on this, most of the homes on the street, as you can see, are at or around the 25 foot mark there is one exception to the very first property when you come in off the street that property is set back that also happens to be the only paved driveway in the neighborhood everybody else has um, gravel driveways in this this street here um, so there are two issues that we're looking at we can vote on them separate we need to vote on them separately 
Uh, one is the pavement, and then one is the location of the garage. Okay. So this is the set the uh, site plan from the petitioner. Um, so it's 30 feet from the property line to the garage, and it's a total of 58 feet from the property line to the existing house. And the side property line is going to be well over our required going to be six feet. We only require four feet. Um, so they meet. Other setbacks other than this, that front yard setback for accessory structures. Uh, so here's the, the neighborhood. Um, that's the house there behind the, the red dump truck. Um, and you can see the hill <coughs> slopes away. Um, so there is significant cost associated with building a garage back there because of the slope. They would have to have a lot of engineering to, to make it come up to the grade of the street. This is the contours, it kind of shows the grade. Um, we didn't have any comments either for or against this, uh, either email, <coughs> phone, or letters or anything at all. Um, in doing our analysis, <coughs> they have met all the four conditions um, and rec staff recommends for approval as proposed. Do you have back a back screen, Scott? Which screen you uh, The one where you're showing the hardship. Oh, yes. Sorry. That, uh, that one. Yep. <coughs> so this should be the same as what the staff report that mm -hmm. you received has. So there is going to be a lot of grading and thing to get that garage. There would be if they put it back further where it's required to be. They, okay. They, they don't have to do, they don't have to build the garage up okay. if they put it within 30 feet of the front oh, property okay. line. Okay. Or not within, but just beyond 30 feet. Okay. Okay. Any now, questions for staff? Yes. Are we making the decision just on the garage and then we'll come back and make a decision about the driveway? Um, or will you provide information it's about It's up to you if you want to. I, I, think I recommend talking about both at the same time okay. when the decision okay. comes up and then just when you vote, then separate out the two issues. Okay. That's what I recommend, but you okay. could do it the other way. So the the other driveways in the area, all except one, are gravel. Right. The <laughs> When you're coming off of Fairmount, and it would be the property on the south side of Hobson, right by Fairmount, that property has a paved driveway. I don't know if it's paved all the way to the garage, cause it's, mm -hmm. but I know it's paved immediately off of Hobson, and it's kind of up a little bit, and it takes a dog leg over, yeah. and that house is set back a little bit else is out there but that's like three or four houses to the west so is there a problem then with um, keeping this gravel as opposed to paved? Um, technically, when you put in a, a garage like this, mm -hmm. you need to meet the existing code when it goes in. So it should have a paved surface because that's what we require. Um, however, as I stated, the, this neighborhood is a little bit more unique in that almost everybody out there has gravel driveways. Um, so we feel it believes it, it meets the standards for hardship variance for the gravel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is staff recommending that we should put a hard, or they have a hard driveway, Scott? We're recommending in favor of both requests, both the request to set the building back 30 feet from the front property line and request to leave the driveway as it is. As it is, okay. Okay. Are there any drainage problems or anything with the current driveway? Um, no, I mean, not that I'm aware of, and it slopes away towards the back, um, so the water wouldn't be directed on the neighboring properties, it would, it would just stay on the subject property, uh, similar to it is now. And staying gravel, it would probably be helpful with you a little get more some permeability. Mm -hmm. yeah. With gravel, yeah. Yes. Any other questions from staff members? Okay. Thank you, Scott. <coughs> the applicant want to come up, or a representative, or to give your request. <laughs> Want 
you give your name, please? Jessica Williams Long. I'm with Triad Roofing and Construction. Cindy Richards. I'm the homeowner. Okay. Well, tell us what you want. Elected us to. Okay, what do we want? You guys to approve the setbacks. Sorry, we're nervous. <laughs> That's good. Um, to approve the setbacks because it will create a very like a large expense on her to move the garage back and make the gravel concrete. How big is the um, <clears throat> the driveway itself? How big is the driveway? <clears throat> How much paving? Right now, he said it's at 30 feet. He said if we have to um, move it back, it'll be an additional 30 feet. So currently, it's 30 feet yes. long. Where that grade line is, yes. Yeah, OK. Um, and then the quote that was in the staff pet report, mm -hmm. that was be to pave it at this location, which would be $8,000. Yeah. Yeah. Or was it the further in the back location? I can't be certain. What was the further back location? <laughs> uh, meeting the requirement, which would be behind the front wall of the house. Well, I can look that up, what the quote says. Full foundation, is would <clears throat> which would add over $20,000 to the cost of the garage. There's also a concrete slab and pergola that was put there by previous owners. Yeah, so if it went back to that, like, would we have to remove all of that to put it? Yeah, so. He said, all right, he said that um, if it had to be moved back, you would have to remove existing, the existing concrete, fill it in, and do what? Build a foundation wall. And what? Sorry. And backfill it. And pour the concrete. <clears throat> and that, that could actually cause problems with water, mm -hmm. I would think, with all that fill. Right. You'd have water coming down the hill towards the garage. Yeah. Uh, or naturally, it would mm -hmm. normally go downhill towards the garage. You'd have water coming down against the, the new foundation walls. Yeah. Um, I did find the quote that I was looking for. So a 30 by 30 slab is the $8,000. That's paving it where it's at, that location. It would be more than that if they put it back further just okay. for the pavement. So the building would be over $20,000 additional. Yeah. So I don't know if this is a question for staff or the, home, or the homeowner, but I'm assuming, is there anything in the, in the uh, request that would require the front of the new structure to be at least in line with the front of the neighboring home. Like I wouldn't want to see it get closer to Hobson Avenue. If anything, it'd want to be a little further back so as not to obstruct the view of the neighbor. Right. You know so I mean? if if that structure was blocking, uh, you know, if it was so, so let's say all the other homes were in line with 3331, staff would probably likely not be recommending in favor of this request. But because it is back and in line with the homes. Um, we have recommended the way we did. He said that the garage will be in line with the house next to it. Right. Yeah. Okay. For emergency vehicles, I mean, does that does that play into this, Scott? Does, does like the fire department anybody review this for like getting in and out of the property um, for fires? Whether, or? whether it's at this location or further back, uh, it doesn't make any difference to them. Um, they would just park on Hobson. Well, if they need to get anywhere, I mean, they just right. they just go where they need to get. They don't. Really worry <laughs> That's about right. That. They don't worry, they don't really about, worry about it. Yeah. 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 They just park and run. Yep. And I don't know exactly where the nearest hydrant is, but when we've had them review staff or review uh, building plans before, like then that wouldn't. That's never been an issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, do you have any more comments? Or are you all done? Or any more comments? Okay. Thank well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Any questions from the board? So, Scott is recommending that we vote on, there's like two parts right, to this request, right. one for the driveway, one for the right. building location. Okay. So, well, are they both, I guess I missed that, is there both in the, are they both in the same request here? Right, they're the same number, it's just two aspects of it. One aspect is gravel for the driveway. Yeah, variance okay. to maintain the existing driveway and the other part of the variance okay. is the location of the structure. Okay. Before we go on, is there anyone in the audience in favor of this request? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anyone in the audience opposed to this request? Seeing none. Does the applicant got any final comments? Okay. Okay. Board discussion? None? Mm -hmm. We ask for a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the setback portion of the request of HV 19-23. I second. Do we need a voice vote again? Yeah, we'll do a roll call. Okay. Um, Quinn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Strayhall. Ah, Strayhall. Rice dropper, sorry. I a... should say no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That part of your motion has been approved. Okay, now we got the, another motion. Judith, you want to make that motion? I um, make a move to approve request HV 1923 as it relates to the driveway remaining gravel. <clears throat> I'll second. And roll call, Lee. Yes. Quinn? Yes. And Rice Drop. Yes. Your variance has been approved. Both of them. Thank you. Okay. I can read it. Is there any other business that uh, we haven't? Well, there is. We do have business. And, you know, I've been on this board the last year and, or two years, and Judith has been here, and I think we're going to miss her. She was uh, the one that. Mm -hmm goes to many seminars and <laughs> and uh, understands this better probably than I do but uh, it was always great to get her insight on Thank this you. and we're gonna miss you Judith and Thank you. and we wish Thank you luck much. and I've been there where you're going so I know exactly <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of hard work and it's uh, but I know you're up for it and you're gonna do a great job Thank you very much. Best wishes for Thank you. Best wishes to you. Thank Congratulations. You. Yeah. Yes, I'll be a, a problem for a city <laughs> from another point of view. <laughs> wait, wait till you get Scott up in front of the microphone with the whole council <laughs> chambers filled. <laughs> I can see well, it now, you. Mayor yes. Lee, in the next. No, 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 no. I have no ambitions. <laughs> okay. No ambitions, but I really appreciate the opportunity to be yeah. on this board. Um, I've learned a great deal, and working with everybody. <clears throat> I've asked a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I will continue to do that on city council. Um, but I will take the experience from zoning board to my next step. Well, and Judith. It gives me a good foundation. You can always call Scott at any time. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, how you speak time, for I don't know if I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. And Mallory. You can always call Mallory. I've seen Judith on, in our um, council conference room almost every week since the election, doing yeah. her homework and preparing. That's for good. Council. Yes, and I just had my meeting with. Um, um, my Kyle group for the mm -hmm. the commission I'm on for that and yeah, yeah. Well, well, lots of meetings about flooding mm -hmm. I've yes. done a lot of that yes. <laughs> it's a great job well you yeah, know I, I look forward to being helpful with that okay. that issue because of my experience and and background I think um, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with everybody in the city for that well we've talked too long keeping Scott and Mallory here so <laughs> I make a motion that well, I can't make it but uh, can I get a motion? I to make adjourn? a mo motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Scott, for no, coming. Thank you all for coming down on a special day. <laughs> no, thank you for that. I, I really just. You too, Mallory. Thanks for coming. Absolutely.